Greetings, Pilgrims, and welcome to another episode of the Polygon Pilgrimage. And today, I wanted to show you a really neat feature of Maya LT here. It might be of Maya in general, but I'm using Maya LT that will allow us to rapidly prototype an asset from here into Unity. Now, it also has the ability to export directly from Maya into Unreal. However, the process is not quite as smooth. But I'm going to show you both today, and just to give you a heads up as to how it works in both engines, I'm becoming sort of a 50-50 guy with my work currently using both Unity and using Unreal. So let's get started with Unity to begin with. So typically to import an asset, if I bring up Unity here, I would have to right click, say import new asset, or I could drag an asset into the scene, or I can go file, import, you know, there's all kinds of different ways. But working directly inside of Maya here, if I select my book asset here, so I'm going to select this guy here, and I can go here and say file, send to Unity. Now, it also gives me the ability to set my Unity project, which means it will remember the project, and then I just have to tell it where within the project from there. Let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to set my Unity project. So I'm going to say my computer. Let's go to the D drive, and we are under the Polygon Pilgrimage folder in this thing called asset testing. So I'm going to say select. So there, now I've set my Unity project. Now, when I go file, send to Unity, selection, it goes right to that folder, and I'm in the asset tests folder just beneath it, and I'm gonna call this book. Now, I can set my options here. The only one I recommend is set your smoothing groups, make sure that comes in, everything else should be fine, and I'm gonna say export selection, and voila, we're done. So let's pop over to Unity, bring that up there, and here it is, book. There he is, looking nice and spiffy. Let's go ahead and drag him and drop him into the world. And he has to go at 0 0.50. There we go, because I have a ground plane here. So here's my book in the world. And you'll notice that when I select the book and expand it, it's a two-part object. So the whole thing is called book. And then it has two child objects, book cover and book pages. So I can apply a separate material to both. And it looks really nice in the world here, but now let's say I wanted to make a change. Say, okay, we're working on the game, and I say I want to make this larger, you know, more space between the edges of the page here and the cover. So if you if you noticed back in Maya here, I have a secondary book here which has an extended space there. Maybe we need some UI, maybe we want the character to put their fingers there, something. So assume this was the same book and we just edit it. The reason I have two is just so that you know we don't overwrite that. I'm going to select the whole book again, say this is the new book, and I need to replace this book. So how do I do that? Normally you'd have to delete the asset, re-import it, put it back in the same space, no such need. I'm just going to say file, send to Unity, selection, and I'm going to call it book again. Call it the exact same file name, the exact same setting, say export. And it's going to say, do you want to replace? I go, yep, sure do. Now if I go to Unity, boom, look at this. It's completely replaced the object for me. It's swap them automatically. I don't have to do any fancy delete the old, import the new, none of that. Now you'll notice that it is called book and it does have book cover one, book pages one because that's what it was in Maya when I did a duplicate. But if they were the exact same object, if I just were to edit it, it would be the exact same thing. So it just completely replaces it. It's amazing. And the best part about this is if you then make multiple copies in the scene, I believe you can say, let me do two here. And now let's go back and we'll do another change, okay? So we're going to make the pages super tall, just, you know, ridiculously tall. Let's go like this. And there we go. We'll move those up. So, you know, this is stupid. You wouldn't really do this. Or maybe you would uh, if you wanted, like, a ridiculous government manual on something, you know, some kind of crazy amount here. So now let's try it again. So say send to Unity, selection. I'm going to call it book. There we go. Say, yep, I'm good. Yes, please replace. And let's see what happened. Boom. Both instances in the scene have been changed, and it's the exact same setup. So if I look here, book cover one, book cover one, they're the same thing. So this is fantastic, especially if you're prototyping and you say, oh, I'm building a level and I make these pillars or this wall, and I use that wall everywhere. Well, then we can just very quickly say, you know what, I'm going to make a change to the wall, and it's not that big of an impact to your progress. Now, I used this trick recently during the Global Game Jam 2017. I made sure that everything was built inside of Maya so that I could take those assets and quickly make a duplicate in the scene, get it all set up, 
And then if I needed to make a change like this, I knew with this trick inside of Maya that I could propagate those changes across all the objects very quickly. Now this works with doing uh, physical model changes. This works with doing uh, UV changes or just changing like a smoothing group. So if something was not looking right, say uh, this smoothing group here on the very flat edges of the page were not set to the proper hard edge along this edge here, I could make that change to this object and then replicate it into the scene as well and that'd be super easy. So we've seen here that inside of Maya and into uh, Unity we have a great setup. Unfortunately I have not found the right process to do the same thing in Unreal in the same amount of ease. It doesn't auto update so spoiler alert. Alright so let's see how this would work for Unreal. So we'll go back to our book and I'm going to select the book and I'm going to say file send to Unreal set Unreal project. Now, I've already done this once before but I just wanted to show you the whole setup so under documents it's under Unreal Projects, and mine is called Learning UE4. And I have to select just that folder and say Select. There we go. Now we say File, Send to Unreal, Selection. And you'll see here it goes to this Import folder. I'm going to back up one and put it into the content. And you see I've already done this before, but I just wanted to prove the point. And it did give me a warning error when I imported into Unreal about the smoothing groups that it wasn't happy with, that, that it had to calculate that wasn't happy that it didn't have that initially. So you just check this box here and it's under geometry. Check that box and the smoothing groups will come in with you. And we'll say book, export, yes. Now if I go to Unreal, here we are in Unreal, and there we go, a change has been detected. I'm going to say don't ask me again, I'm going to say import. There we go, it's processing and it will import all of our objects for us. If I just take a look, this is just a blank environment. And I should have under content, I should have my book. And where is my book at? He did not come in properly, did he? It was an error there. Okay, see, the first time you do this, it worked perfectly. So let's go back, take another look around. We're going to call it something different just to make sure. So let's say file, send to Unreal selection. Uh, here we are, go up one. We're in the content. And I'm going to say book one, just so that it is a different object. Export selection back to Unreal. There we go. So this comes up here and we want to make sure we set our options. So yeah, zero everything out. Everything's fine there. I don't actually want the materials or the textures and I'm going to say import all. And there's only one in this setup and there he is, book here. So I think checking that box actually screwed us up in the sense that when it was coming in it didn't show us those options and so it couldn't show us those options. It didn't actually finish the import. So that's one problem. So then I'm going to bring the book into the scene, and here he is. Okay, so that's good. We got our book. Whoa, wrong keys. So we got our book, and we're all set there. He's looking good, right size. Everything's fine there. But now, the making the changes and the auto-updating is not nearly as nice. In fact, I can't seem to get it to work. So let's go back to uh, Maya, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So we have that one, and let's say now we want to go ahead and do our second one here. So let's select this. And with our Unreal project set, I'm going to just export selection, and I'm going to call it content. I'm going to call it book one. We we'll try the same trick, right? Export selection, yes. Okay, everything seemed to go fine from here. But when we come back to Unreal, oh, well, now it decides to work. <laughs> I did this earlier, and it doesn't work. So good. It does update your object, absolutely. And uh, I think the trick is to not have that checkbox checked when you import an object. Make sure that you don't check that box to say never show me again because you might need to make changes to it. Say you're going to import an object and you want it to be just a temporary, just a placeholder object. Then you don't want the um, uh, materials to come with it necessarily. So now this is fantastic. So now the question is what happens if I make a duplicate? Okay, more than one in the scene. And let's go back and let's experiment. So we're back with our gigantic pages here and let's say we'll make them cartoonishly small this way. Okay. So now let's export this file, uh, send to Unreal, selection, up one, content, and book one. Yeah, we're making changes to our book one. Replace. Okay, let's go back to Unreal and see what happens. Okay, it did update that time. Good. Excellent. So it looks like Unreal does the same thing. I take back what I said earlier. Looks like you can have the same amount of functionality in both engines, and that is fantastic.
All right, so now that we've proven that we have this functionality in both engines, I want to show you a quick example of the true power of this. And just for simplicity's sake, we're going to stick with uh, Unity for the uh, example here, although I do favor Unreal in general for building these days. So let's go ahead and get rid of our books. We're going to get rid of those. There we go. So as I mentioned, this is really powerful for making like a modular world kit and then quickly updating it. So let's go ahead and build one of those. So I'm going to jump back over to the scene here, and we're going to do a little bit of building, just very quickly. So I'm going to make a plane, bring that over here. Let's uh, delete the books for now. There we go. We'll focus on the plane. And for this plane, I just want it to be a one by one, and I need the tessellation. Is that it? No, where is my option? There they are. So we're just going to do one by one, and it's a one by one already. And so let's check, make sure we check, always check your uh, your settings. Make sure you're not working with uh, strange settings. Uh, let's go settings here. So we are in centimeters. I'm going to change this to meters. So that way it will update to Unity. So you can see here we're at 0.01 now. So yeah, let's definitely make that one by one. Okay, so this is a one by one. So this is our floor, right? Now, if I take this and I'm going to make a duplicate, control D, move this over here. Thank you. I'm going to rotate you and I'll rotate you 90 degrees. Very good. Move you up. So the one nice thing about uh, Unity, well, I'm sorry, with about Maya here about making modular kits is the uh, the D key here is your friend. I can snap things to corners and then I can just snap things over here. There we go. So I can make sure that my modular kit works out very nicely indeed. So let's take this and I'm going to, did I have one on here? I don't have one on here. Modify, center pivot, I need to make one of those. There we go. So that's gonna be my pivot for that guy. Now, this is the wall. So let's go ahead and uh, we will automatically unwrap this guy and I will show you uh, how, the, how the power of this works. So there we go. Nice texture there if we wanted to have a full one by one tile texture in there, good. So our wall, let's call that complete, all right? So I do have to name it because I hate not naming things. There you go. So, wall. Okay, it's a good name for a wall. <laughs> and so we already have our uh, Unity project set. So I'm going to say export selection, and you'll see here it puts me right there. So I can have both the Unity and the Unreal project set up at the same same time. So I can go to two different projects. So if you wanted to create, say, a, a whole game or a whole scene in both engines simultaneously, this is a great tool to do that. So this is a fantastic setup here. All right, so let's just call this wall, and we will say export selected. There we go. Let's jump over to Unity. All right, so I have my wall. So I'm gonna bring my wall in, and there he is. Now, his pivot is in the center there, so obviously if I go zero, I have to go one, zero. There you go, he's centered. So let's move him back a bit, there we go. So there's our wall, and I'm gonna make a couple duplicates. Duplicate, duplicate, so there we go. So there's a couple of walls. And in Unity, if you hold down the V key, we can do this snapping together. So you see how quickly it is to make a wall set up here and a modular kit, especially in Unity and with Unreal, the snapping is to die for. So you can just snap things together all day long and you're all set here. So let's make, we're gonna make a corner piece as well, but I'm gonna make these, uh, set them up so that we have that. So let's rotate and over here, I'll just pump in 90. There we go. Now they don't, all go together. I know there's a button for that, but I can't remember it off the top of my head, but it's okay. We'll snap them all back together and we'll put all those like that. So we're making room for a corner piece there. Okay. So this is what we're going to create here and we have our floor kit as well. So I'm going to go ahead and delete this because we have a floor piece as well. So let's go back here and with our floor piece selected, here he is. Let's call him floor. You guessed it. And again, we'll automatically unwrap. This is just force a habit. I just like to check it. There we go, he's all set. And we will export this piece. And I'm going a little fast because I do want to show you just how quickly iterating through all this is, especially if you spell correctly. There we go, so export the floor. He's all set. Bring floor piece in, there we go. And why are you all crazy over there? There we go, okay, so we'll bring this guy over here and I'm going to snap him to there. There we go. Duplicate, duplicate. Now here's a neat trick. This is one of the things that I do all the time and somebody recently was amazed. I don't understand why. 
But if I want to fill out this space, don't duplicate one at a time. You duplicate whole sections at a time. So I'll duplicate all of that, and then I'll snap all of that together. And now I'll duplicate all of this and move all these together. There you go. So you have a, a floor very quickly. Now that our floor is in place, we know where these are going to go. Let's snap that together. Now we have our corner there, so we'll delete one wall. There we go. So we've got a corner piece and we've got our walls and our floors. Okay? Very quick and easy so far. And we should do some organization here because this is getting a little crazy, but in general, you would keep up with that. This is just for example purposes. So now comes the point, let's make our, uh, we gotta make our corner piece still. All right, corner piece. So we'll duplicate you. Oops. Duplicate you. Come on. Not like a duplicate. There we go. Duplicate. Thank you. <laughs> I knew that was the right key. There we go. Duplicate you. And what I like to do here with the corner piece is we can go into our modeling toolkit, take our vertices, take these guys, and you can subset our vertex there, which is awesome. And now I'll take that guy and move them all over there. There we go. So this is one piece here, and this is a piece here, but together they're going to be our corner. So let's drop out of that channel box. There we go. So together they're going to be that. Now I will move our pivot to the corner and file export and done unity selection corner okay we're getting there now we pop back over to unity our corner piece is ready let's bring him in there he is needs to be rotated a little bit uh, negative 90 oops negative 90 negative that's what I typed I always like to rotate it a little bit and then what I'll do is I'll see which way it's going <laughs> and I just finish it off numerically all right, so we have our world here, but it's kind of plain, and I want to make drastic changes to it. This is where the power of this kit comes into play. So let's move you along over there. So say for our floors, say we really wanted to make some drastic changes, and okay, we decided we do want to have some actual modeled detail into our floors. Let's go ahead and do a connect, and I'm just going to do one for right now, and then I'm going to do one this way as well. Connect. There we go. Now with my uh, faces selected, if I do this correctly, should be able to bevel, and I want to keep them relatively small at first. So let's do something like that. And I want it to remain. No, center edge. No, I don't think so. That's fine. That's fine. Just like that. Okay, cool. So we got some detail to it, right? Now we're going to select these and now we'll extrude upwards just a little bit. So, there we go. So our floor is going to be more like this. So as we've seen with our rapid prototyping, this is a really easy change and it's not a big problem. You would have to do a little bit of re-UVing and all that, make sure your textures work. But assuming that's all done, we just say send to Unity, selection. These are our floors. Please update my floors. Say, okay, cool. Let's go back and check it out. And all of our floors instantly update. Nice and easy, no problems. And they're all connected, you can see there. They're seamless. Really nice setup there. So let's do the walls really quickly. You get the idea, but just to kind of drive the point home, let's do uh, edges here. And here's one of my favorites is we'll do, select these edges and I want to do a connect. But I want two segments. And I believe it's a pinch uh, 0.5. Uh, why did it not take my two segments? There we go. 0.75. Uh, something like this. I don't know why it would be over one. That's That always confuses me. Why would it be over one? There we go. That's more like what I was looking for. So we'll take that. And then here, if I take my pieces here, and I like to extrude and make a little bit of like a molding so we'll bring those out like that there we go you see how fast that can just sort of play with it you don't have to have a solid idea in mind at first you want to block it out you want to get a general feel for proportion and say that seems pretty good to me so now I'll say file send to unity selection let's update our walls okay cool and now oh no go back to unity there we go 
Now they got off a bit, and I'm wondering why exactly. Was it because the pivot changed? I bet it was because the pivot changed. Yeah, the pivot changed, okay. But we can easily fix that, that's not a big deal. The important part is our detail has come through seamlessly. We've got some nice detail in these walls here, and they're easy to set back to their original pivots, it's not a problem, especially since we're working with one meter sections, and they're all based upon the grid, so that's no problem at all. But we've quickly added detail to every piece in the scene without having to remodel anything and without having to, you know, re-import uh, re rather. We, we did a little extra modeling, we remodeled a little bit. No pun intended, remodeled the room. But uh, what we've done is we've done a little bit of extra work in Maya and then it propagates that those changes to every object in the scene. We updated all of these objects here without having to touch each one and re-import them and reposition them in the world a little bit because our pivot changed. But we've done all of this work sort of automatically. And so this is a great tool. I really recommend you guys take a look at it. Uh, the Send to Unity, Send to Unreal. And it's nice to know that it does work for both pieces of software. So we could easily replicate this in Unreal as well. So that's all I have for you guys this week. I've uh, blabbered at you enough, but I hope that this is helpful to you. And uh, if you have other other tools like this, other little quick tips to do rapid prototyping, let's let's talk about that. So send those questions in, send those comments. Let's keep the conversation going and inform all of our fellow artists, all of our fellow pilgrims out there who are um, journeying towards becoming a better artist. That's what we're all about. You'll hear me say it a lot because it's true. And as always, guys, keep practicing, get better, and I'll see you next time as the pilgrimage continues.